Welcome to Finance and Excel video number 85. Hey, if you want to download this workbook for chapter 9, click on the link directly below the video and scroll all the way down to the Finance Excel class section. Oh, in this video, we're going to talk about makers. What is makers? Makers is a depreciation method defined by tax law. And since when we buy an asset, the cash flow goes out at time zero, that all the cash for the asset is at time zero nowhere else in the remaining years except for the tax implications from depreciation so in earlier videos we used the straight line depreciation method that's not the one we should be using we should be using the uh, makers tax tables like this because they will help us calculate the taxes paid or taxes avoided. Sometimes if we have a loss, we can avoid paying taxes. And those are the cash flows relevant for uh, figuring out future cash flows for the present value calculation. So we want to look at makers in this video. So first off, you have to figure out what you are depreciating. And over here on this sheet, makers, this is straight from uh, the tax law and so you could see there's three year property 5, 7, 10, 15, 20 and you have to actually figure out which category your asset falls into and then you have uh, tables like this but in this class we'll just use this abbreviated table so research equipment special tools going to be depreciated as, for, uh, as a three year class Autos, computers, five-year, industrial equipment, office, furniture, seven-year. And here are the percentages we use. And guess what? The depre maker's depreciation in year one, it just says for a three-year, it says take the full asset price. So we're going to do a computer example, 25000 and multiply by that, and that's your depreciation. The next year, wow, you get to multiply by 0.44 of the t original full cost. These rates will bring it down to zero. Five, seven. So let's go ahead and see how this works. We're going to say our marginal tax rate is uh, 0.34 uh, for when when we sell the asset. At the end, we'll have to use that tax rate. Otherwise, we'll be using these. We have a, a computer system that costs 25,000. The property class is going to be uh, computers, so we have to do five year. So I'm just going to put five year here. All right now the beginning, we're going to do the beginning book value. I'm going to scroll over so we can see this column here. We're going to do beginning book value, the actual depreciation, and then the end book value. We have to do this whole table to figure out depreciation expenses for each operating cash flow. We also need to look at end book value when we sell it. And we'll see an example when we um, sell it. Uh, with market value above book value and less than book value. So the beginning balance, I'm just going to say, boop, that one right there. Tab, tab. The depreciation expense is pretty easy. You say, um, and I'm going to lock it on that cell right there, and I'm going to hit F4, because the way it works is every single cell is going to take the full amount and multiply it by whatever the appropriate rate is. So times, and I'm going to say for five years, this is year one. So I click on that. Notice when we copy this down, it'll move directly, correctly through all of the uh, rates we want. So we deliver, um, go down through uh, one year more than uh, the uh, class uh, size is. All right, so that's our depreciation for each period. The end book value is going to be, hey, whatever the beginning book value minus our depreciation. And now we can copy this down. Oops, except for if I copy it down here, there's a zero there. Now, what's the begin book value in year two? Oh, of course, it's the end from, you know, December 31st, that's this. And so on January 1st, that is the end becomes the begin. Now I'm going to copy this down, and it will work, right? Because it's relative cell reference, this minus that. So I'm going to copy this one down. And I'm going to copy this one down right here, and then it should all work fine. Now, we can uh, go ahead and add up our non-cash depreciation expense right here. And what amount should we get? We should get exactly the original historical cost, because Makers uh, assumes that there is no salvage. It depreciates it down to zero. 
All right. Now, if you want, you can, um, if you have a table like this, we could explicitly show the calculation, right? So I'd say equals this, and I'm going to hit F4. And now I'm going to use the join symbol, the join symbol. That's Shift 7. That's called an ampersand. And in double quotes, I'm going to put some text. I'm going to put a multiplication symbol, end double quote. So if you enter this formula right here, this is a text form that says, hey, I'm going to join this piece and that. And so now this cell contains both of those things. Now we need to join one more thing. We're going to join this rate right here. That'll be a relative cell reference. So now we're joining two join symbol. That means we're joining one, two, three things. Well, now I can copy this down. Right? And so that is the explicit uh, calculation right there. All right, now we're not going to look at the individual period tax implications. We'll do that in the next video. We're just learning about um, how to calculate the depreciation in this video. However, in this video, we do want to see uh, learn about the implications uh, for taxes and depreciation when you sell the asset. Now, we're going to uh, look at two examples here. When selling at the end, if market value, that just means the amount you sell your asset for, is greater than book value, then we have to pay taxes on the difference between market value and end maker's book value. In essence, we're going to see that it's we have depreciated it too much. So in our example, we sell it for 4,500 at the year end of year four. So we have to find end book value. So I'm going to say equals that. Oh, and we can see right away a market value is greater than end book value. Now in this case, it means that we have depreciated too much. So book value is calculated by subtracting out these non-cash depreciation expenses. So we went, we're already down for in our book value down to 4,320. That means the difference between these two tells us how much depreciation we took on our tax statement uh, to gain a, a tax saving that we shouldn't have, right? So let's figure out the difference. Not that we shouldn't have, but now we have to recapture it. So we had a tax savings, and now because we sold it for more, um, we have to calculate the difference and then figure out how much tax to pay. Now, uh, it can get quite complicated when you're selling an asset, whether it's a capital gain or the ordinary tax rate. In this class, we'll just assume it's the ordinary uh, tax rate. So we simply say, hey, that's the depreciation we just recaptured times our marginal tax rate. And guess what? That is a tax going out. So when we calculate our cash flow, we can't just throw the, the cash coming in for the, the asset, selling the asset, right? Also got to look at the tax implication here. So that would be 4,500 minus the taxes paid out. Now it's kind of the, so that's the total cash we'd have at the end of this project if we're winding it down at uh, p end of period four. Now, there's one other situation, right? Let's look at this one right here. What happens if book value is greater than market value? We get a tax benefit because then we have a loss. So here it is. We're going to assume we sell it for 4000 Oh, at the end of year two, right? So by the way, these tables, you just fill them out like this, and then at any point in time where you, where you sell it, you just look at the appropriate numbers. All right, so book end book value. Ooh, 12,000, right? So our book value says it's uh, worth 12,000, and we sell it for 4,000. So we have a loss. Now we're going to do this. Um, the difference equals this minus that. So I'm going to do market value minus the book value, because then it will tell us, oh, yeah, that minus sign tells us it is a loss. So then with the tax benefit, we say that times this, because we get to uh, record this as a loss on our tax record. And this is a subtraction, so we avoid paying those taxes. So at the end, what do we do? We say the, four, the cash actually coming in is 4,000. And now this is a minus here. Um, I really should have done that here just because this is a benefit. So this is like a cash flow in. So I'm going to say uh, minus of that. And so then the cash flow becomes 4,000 
plus the benefit. And the benefit is we avoided paying those taxes. Now in uh, this video we just briefly saw makers, how to build a little table, begin book value, the depreciation, the end book value. What happens if we sell it when market value is greater than book value, When also when we sell it what to do if book value is greater than market value. In our next video, we'll put it all together. We use all this, this uh, maker's depreciation cash flow implications and we'll do uh, a big comprehensive example for cash flows and net present value. All right, see you next video.